You may be seated. If you have cell phones, would you please silence them? That would be nice. Thank you. Welcome, honored guest. We are here gathered today to join Garrett and Morgan in the Holy Sacrament of Marriage. Your support and presence mean a great deal to them. Really, thank you for coming. My name is Dale Christensen. I'm Morgan's uncle and Terry's much older brother. <laughs> Morgan and Garrett asked me to officiate today's blessed event. I never envisioned doing anything like this ever, but uh, it was certainly never also on my bucket list. Not at all, not at all. Nonetheless, I was deeply honored, as you know. I was deeply honored and humbled to accept. Thank you. Morgan also guided me in becoming an American uh, marriage minister. Now I can perform marriages in all 50 states. <laughs> and I pray to do my part, my best, today to make this a wonderful, blessed day for Garrett and Morgan. Now, we don't always recognize the hand of God in our lives, although he was always present. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. This is God's presence, as so beautifully outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. And he will be with us today throughout this blessed ceremony. So not long after I met Becky, and her girls for the first time, the truth of God's presence became clear to me. And I began to see his fingerprints on their lives and on the lives of Terry and all his girls. God brought them together for a purpose. It was not happenstance. It was not co a coincidence. When I think about that moment, I consider how their lives have evolved and I can clearly see the Lord's hand. When years ago they were blessed with the means to purchase a beautiful country property, great for raising a large family of girls, God did that. Terry was blessed with a house full of six females. <laughs> Some would say that's God's provision, as stated in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Now heaven only knows get Terry needed the influence and direction only women can provide. Or one could say, that God certainly has a, sen a sense of humor. <laughs> anyway, Terry seems to have flourished in their presence. Some would also claim he still has a sanity. But, you know, that assertion may be debatable. Anyway, I clearly recall meeting Becky and all her little girls years ago. I remember Bo Morgan boldly climbing up on this stranger's lap, talking a blue streak. Little Jillian followed her older sister on my other knee. Big sister Brett took a more considered approach and watched all this from across the room. It was a fascinating watching these little precious personalities interact. Morgan, our beautiful bride, was certainly the outgoing force to be sure. For example, when she was still rather young, her father took her out snowmobiling. It was cold. Well, go figure. It was in winter in northern Minnesota. Anyway, she got cold but would not complain or cry. Orlin could tell she was getting cold and took her inside. Her feet were actually turning blue, but this little force of nature held it all in. I suspect Orlin then realized that this little girl was tougher than any little boy. <laughs> as time passed, I witnessed snapshots in time as all these little creatures blew, grew into beautiful young ladies, each with their own unique personalities. My initial impression of Morgan being the outgoing talkative force of nature proved accurate. For example, at just 12 years old, just 12 years old, she was given a cell phone. Now, it did not take her long to run up an $800 phone bill. Of course, talking much and texting volumes. Anyway, mom ended up taking her SIM card and Orland laid guidelines and limits for cell phone usage. Now, not to be detoured, little Morgan figured out how to circumvent, and she got her own SIM card, a true force of nature in the making. Fortunately for Morgan, she had two strong father figures, thank you, and a dedicated mom to guide this strong-willed soul. 
As they say, it took a team effort. <laughs> but truth be told, she's a mirror image of her mom. To know one is to know both. Yes, I think we all know how Morgan came to be. It is truly God's will. A couple of years ago, I met Garrett, a quiet, thoughtful soul. He seemed to compliment Morgan's outgoing, talkative personality. <laughs> Initially, I wondered if Garrett could actually speak. <laughs> Morgan could talk nonstop while Garrett sat nodding in silence. <laughs> However, I soon realized that Garrett could speak quite well. I discovered he was one of those people to which you should pay strict attention to gain their knowledge and insight. He is quiet, yes, but he's certainly a level-headed, considered soul. His folks, Denny and Becky, saw him develop into a quiet young man, notably reserved, but also contemplative, thoughtful, and strategic in his life's activities. For example, his folks fostered him in becoming an excellent hockey player, never the aggressive checker, but an effective strategic talent. Morgan and Garrett seemed to blend and, comp and complement each other perfectly. Garrett, the stabilizing, thoughtful influence, and Morgan, the outgoing adventurer. Garrett, if you wish, Garrett the rudder, and Morgan the engine. Both are required to meet life's challenges. They met through friends in 2020. They enjoyed similar interests, since their personalities dovetailed each other so perfectly their mutual comfort soon grew into a deep, loving relationship. They knew they had found their soulmates. This is God's perfect timing, as so beautifully stated in Proverbs 16, verse 9. So here we are. Today, we are celebrating Garrett and Morgan in a profound expression of love to one another. That love, loyalty, and understanding are the foundations of a happy and an enduring home. I would also like us to take a moment, if you would please, to reflect on God's work in our lives. The events we call fortunate, lucky, coincidental, or circumstantial are God's fingerprints. He is continually wooing us because he loves us. This is God's purpose, also stated in, in Psalms chapter 57, verse two. When I look at you, Garrett and Morgan, I see God's hand. I see God's love. I see God's amazing work. Your relationship is testimony to his great qualities. It is indeed God's plan. Now, Morgan's grandmother, Barbara Ofsted, will provide the ceremony's Bible reading from Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through seven. I was told to talk loudly, which I normally do. Can you hear me way back there? Okay. Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, a favorite of mine forever. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. And love also always perseveres. Thank you, Barbara. These are the words as written by the Apostle Paul over 2,000 years ago, and it served as a great foundation for marriages ever since. And it's uh, following those directions, it's a long, happy, and, and blessed marriage. Now, Garrett and Morgan, please exchange your wedding vows. This is your verbal declaration to wed. Garrett, would you please take the bride's hand? Where's your vows? <laughs> okay, Garrett, you may start with your vows, please. Ready? Yeah. Oh. He has a mic. Well, you got
got to make it. No, that doesn't. Oh. Go ahead. Morgan, I never would imagine that out of all the people in this world, I would find someone as special as you. You are my best friend and my one true love. I cannot believe that I am lucky a man who gets to marry you today. I promise I will never forget this privilege no matter how many years pass. I love you now and forever. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Garrett. And now, Morgan, your vows, please. Okay, Garrett. <clears throat> As I've said, I don't do well with speeches or cheesy things, so just bear with me. After all the stress and planning, I can't believe that it's finally here and I'm more than ever ready to celebrate us. Today, surrounded by our loved ones, I choose you to be my husband. I take you with all your strengths and faults as I offer you with my strengths and faults. I promise to help you when you need help and turn to you when I need help. I choose you as a person I want to spend my life with. Through the good times and bad, I'll be standing there by you. Thank you for those beautiful words. Give me a moment here, I'll get my mic on. Thank you. <clears throat> now Morgan, do you take Garrett to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love, to care for in sickness and in health for, you, for as long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> Thoughtful. Thank you, Morgan. Now Garrett, do you take Morgan to be your lawfully wedded wife, to love, to care for in sickness and in health for as long as you both shall live. I think, I do. <laughs> you guys have thought this through, good. Uh, anyway, uh, the ring bearer will now give the rings to the groom, thanks to our trusty ring bearer. Whoops, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't want to let go of him. <laughs> Morgan and Garrett will now exchange rings, a symbol of their love and fidelity. Thank you. Thank you both for sharing this day with your friends and family. We are all honored to be a part of your lives and to witness your union. And I hope and pray you will always remember that you're always loved and supported. Now, by the powers invested in me by the state of Montana and by the American Marriage Ministry, before your friends, family, and God, I proclaim you married. You may seal the union with a big kiss. They'll move out to the side. You can wave my lip gloss. There. Thank you all for attending. After the wedding party has departed, the guests may join in the reception for refreshments and fun. I'm wondering if your love's still strong. Good.